Welcome everybody. I'm Anna and uh, well tonight I'm a bit sad because this is the last episode of the first season but please follow us and uh, we are going to come back as soon as possible. And tonight of course I have another big big challenge because uh, I have here with me a big host and uh, I'm going to present her um, like in a few minutes. So please don't go away and we're here with Widad. Again, hi everybody, and I'm here with uh, Widad. Uh, she's Jordanian, uh, Spain, actually Jordanian Spanish filmmaker, and I'm really excited to be here with her. Hi. Thank you. Hi, Anna. How are you? Fine, thank you. And you? Thank you. I'm good. Thank really you. welcome to be here. And, thank you. Um, well, I wanted to start just asking you the first basic question. So, can you tell me something about your background? I know that you studied here. And I know also that you just, the first path was a little bit different from uh, the path that you are following right now. So can you please explain us a little bit more about this? Um, basically, I've always loved filmmaking so much. I would make home videos with my brother. Uh, we would just dress up and make up scenarios mm -hmm. and act and uh, try to film as much as possible. When I wanted to go to university, I really wanted to do filmmaking, but here in Jordan, we didn't have any proper schools to teach film, and it was very difficult for me to leave the country. So I had to stay here, and I ended up studying interior design, okay. which is not really something I really like. But I like that I did that because it did actually give me, it was my way into filmmaking. So when I first began in filmmaking, I was a, a set decorator, I was doing, uh, uh, I was a drafts person, so I was doing everything that had to do with art design. Okay, so um, you just matched the two things in uh, the first like, period, let's say. Uh, exactly, I matched the two. And then after two years of working on film sets, I got introduced to so many people, I got into the industry uh, a lot deeper, and I knew that was exactly what I wanted to do, because it has always been my passion. So uh, there were some things missing from my knowledge in film, so I decided to put myself in uh, film school. Okay. And I did that for a year. I, uh, I studied for a year. And that was the year I made my first documentary, which is ID Triple Zero. Okay. And, okay, talking about your, like, documentaries, um, I know that you've made, like, four documentaries. Yes. And uh, which one? Uh, can you explain a little bit, uh, like having a an about overall, each one? Yes, and also which one is the, like your my favorite? Your favorite, of course. <laughs> and also, which one it was like the Most. more challenge one? Just yeah. and what was the challenges that you faced during making this uh, documentary? Well, first, uh, when I was still a film student, I made my first documentary, which is ID Triple Zero, which mm -hmm. talks about orphans in Jordan basically orphans above 18, because we talk about orphans and everybody knows they're not doing very well and all the orphanages we have in Jordan are not very qualified and equipped to host uh, these kids. So my film was more focused on those above 18 okay. because, okay, we understand what happens to them when they're inside the orphanage, but what happens once they graduate the orphanage? And it was horrible, to be quite honest. The stories were unbelievable. The everything they have been through and they went through during their years in the orphanages um, actually affected them in their futures. So a lot of kids were, um, were into drugs and a lot committed suicide and a lot were just very troubled. So the main focus of this documentary was the identity number, the ID number that some of these kids had because some of the, some of the orphans are actually born with unknown identities. Okay. So once they're born with that, they have three zeros in their ID numbers, and that's considered fake. So that was the, that inspired me to give the name ID triple zero. Mm -hmm. um, it was a very, it was a short documentary, but it was extremely strong, and people reacted to it a lot. And after a while, uh, the law in Jordan got changed because these kids with unknown identities can actually go now and apply for proper ID numbers, which okay. is magnificent. It's amazing. 
And it wasn't only because of the film. Of course, they went, they protested, and a lot of organizations got involved as well. But the film did give that, give that push. The so. And also the motivation, I think. And also they spread the new, and also you were like promoting in some yeah. how the, the yeah, yeah, you yeah. raise awareness. Also. Because we hear about so many things, but when they actually saw these orphans and these of kids course. talking about their stories, and when I had my first public screening here in Jordan, it was done at the Royal Film Commission, I brought two of the kids who were in the film, so people could not believe that they were actually meeting with these kids and mm -hmm. talking about their personal experiences, like physically together. So that was uh, that was great. But what, what what was the your inspiration in working in this? I mean, usually if you just talk about documentaries, you the first thing is like okay, natural one or animals. Why like this commitment and um, social? <coughs> Uh, well, we were assigned a documentary project in school, okay. and uh, it was a team of four, four students, basically me and three other boys. Um, one of the boys wanted to do something about Petra and all of that. I didn't find that interesting at all, and I said, if you end up doing this project, I'm probably not going to be a part of this team. I'm going to okay. try and change my team. Um, so I offered them this topic because I have a friend of mine. She, was in, she went to school with me. Her name is Farah Hassayed. She actually opened this charity organization okay. called Sakina. And this organization uh, helps these kids a lot. So she helps them psychologically. She finds jobs for them. She educates them. She, she puts them in homes and all of that. Okay. So she had already introduced me to the kids. So when I went and I saw them, I saw that this could be a perfect topic for my, for my uh, basically for my project in school. And I went ahead with it. I convinced the team. Everybody loved the idea. And we did it. I cannot say we didn't go through many problems making this documentary. We did. Like, for example? Like, basically, two, the two main kids in the film were detained for a few days because they were under investigation. What are you saying? Who's filming you? What's this about? What's this for? And then afterwards, my film school contacted me. And they were like, listen, people are not very happy with this uh, documentary. They're not happy with what you're trying to say. You're trying to expose secrets that we don't want to talk about. And they said they gave me the option to either continue with the film or not. And I was like, of course, I'm going to continue with it. I was almost done with it. And I felt so passionate about it. There was no yeah. way I was going to stop it then. So I went ahead with it. And I was followed around for, <laughs> for some time. And then I, uh, I was able to screen it, thanks to Prince Ali, because um, I met with him, and I was like, listen, I have this documentary, and I'm not okay. allowed to do anything with it. But people need to see it. So he gave the permission to the Royal Film Commission, and they screened the documentary, and it just exploded afterwards. OK. And the second one, the second documentary? So that led me to my second documentary, which okay. is called The Last Passenger. It's about escaped Syrian refugees. So these refugees go to the Zaatari camp, naturally, once they come to Jordan. The, that it's the one of the main refugee camp all over of the course, world. Of course, it's it's, it's, uh, it's a large, large, and it's huge, large and it's one yeah. of the historical camps here. In yeah, Jordan. exactly. So a lot of the refugees would go to that camp, and um, the I don't know if you know, but the environment in the camp was really bad for all these uh, refugees. Mm -hmm. So a lot of them tried to escape from the camp and go to other cities in Jordan. So that was a huge deal because that was happening and there was a huge number, maybe around uh, 58,000 by the time I made the film had escaped the camp, okay. which is insane. So um, I made this documentary with two journalists in Jordan, Hamoudi Makkawi and Hanan Khandakji. They were very helpful. We, uh, we investigated a bit more and then we actually sent Hanan to the camp with a small camera as a button. And she went inside, she made a deal with someone and she escaped the camp on camera. Okay. So uh, that was also great to document. Uh, the film, was I did screen it publicly at the Royal Film Commission as well. But the reaction it got was mostly from the parliament in Jordan, because it was screened at the Jordanian parliament. Okay. And um, when the parliament members saw that, they were, uh, they were shocked that that was happening. So a lot of them were put under investigation as well. And because it was illegal, it was not OK to Jordanians or Syrians. It was to no one's benefit, basically. Of course. So um, instantly, these Syrians got issued smart cards inside the Zaatari. So you can actually have a card 
and you can enter and exit the camp without having to escape. Because a lot of them have families in Amman or Irbid or in other uh, cities in, in Jordan, and they can't even see them because it's like this huge big prison. So with the smart cards issued to all of the refugees, they were able to enter and exit freely. Um, so it was also a very uh, important documentary, I can say. So you reach also with this one, like one goal that it's like, OK, you can enter and uh, exit from the camp uh, yes, a so little bit freely <coughs> than uh, the situation it, it, it was, was a bit before. easier for them. I've, I've recently visited the Zaatari okay. camp. It's doing much better than when I did, because when I did, it was 2013. And it's much different. But, I mean, uh, it was a tool to try and access some people who didn't really have a voice and yeah. they can talk about their experiences. And what was the reaction in the camp? Did you all, I mean, did you meet Syrians? Did you explain the project? Or it was like something, let's say, underground? It was, you honestly, because of the nature of this documentary, mm -hmm. I didn't have much content inside the camp. Okay. Most content was outside because all of my subjects were already escaped okay. from the camp. So I had to go visit them in their homes in other cities. Um, uh, they talked a lot. They had so much to say. And I understood where they were coming from. Because having visited the camp in 2013, it was uh, very bad. It was full of tents. And it was uh, not really a place for anyone to live. So I'm glad it's different now. And of I can course. see it uh, progressing more and more every year and uh, the third one so the f third uh, documentary it's like like did you also follow this path and uh, let's say made a documentary concerning the social uh, environment or <coughs> did you change it I didn't change <laughs> <laughs> my third documentary I can say it's kind of my favorite okay it's not my favorite film that I've made but the topic is the topic one of the topics I'm most passionate about it's about detained women okay. who go to prison so they are not killed for honor crimes, which is something I cannot really uh, accept or imagine or understand or anything. So this documentary was very difficult to make. It was very difficult to make because I spent around four years doing research for this special documentary okay. because I had to understand the law and I had to understand these women and I had to understand so many things before I actually got to meet them and, and see them and talk about their experience. And what was the inspiration of, for this one? I mean, did you already, like doing the others, did you already just heard about this? And so it was like something that uh, you heard about it and you said, OK, I just want to go more in depth or? It was uh, basically after my first documentary, ID Triple Zero. Uh, I was contacted by a lot of people, journalists okay. and other people who were like, listen, we saw your documentary, here's this topic, here's this going on, this going on, maybe you can do something about that. So when I heard about the Syrians and, uh, and the situation they were of living course. in and all of that, I felt like I needed to do that. Mm -hmm. um, when I heard about these women in prison, I was like, no way, I'm definitely going to do this. And that's why I put so much time into okay. it, because... I just couldn't not do it. I had to do it. And when I did, I struggled a lot with the research phase because I needed access to women who are somewhere in Jordan. Nobody knows where they are. They're too afraid to speak. They don't want to talk about anything because they're still under threat today. So it was very uh, sensitive to, to talk about and discuss, but I still wanted to do it. Um, so I memorized the law. If you put me in court right now, I can easily defend like a <laughs> professional lawyer because I just understood everything. And when I did meet with these women, it was, um, it was amazing for me. It was such an eye-opening experience because after all of these years of hearing about them and their stories and then meeting them, of it, it impacted me a lot. So this documentary to me is probably the strongest in content because this is something that's very unfair. It's happening in Jordan. It should, shouldn't be happening anywhere in the world. Yeah. Um, it was just something I And did you present love. this documentary like abroad in other, like did you have occasion to, to present <coughs> it? I did, I did, yeah. It went to a few festivals around the world. Mm -hmm. Now all of my films were screened in the Karama Film Festival for Human Rights in Jordan, okay. which is great because all my films are about human rights. <laughs> 
but a few months ago, me was screened in Algeria and Egypt, and um, I don't remember where else actually. And how was this experience to you? I mean, for me, uh, like listen this story, it means like that you've made a huge step, like in order to protect and all the human rights, especially the women's rights. So uh, saying that you went abroad and present this film also like in country that where this problem is really sensitive and it's, re it's really actual. Mm. How was it? I mean, how was the... It was great because you, if you're a woman, you can relate to women from regardless of where you are coming from. So when it was screened in Algeria, a lot of people related a lot and they were like, we can't believe this is happening in Jordan, especially Jordan. How is this acceptable? Why does this happen? And... Um, it was very nice and very sweet to see people from around the world because I just remembered it was screened in, in universities in the mm -hmm. States and in uh, England and in some European countries. And the, the way I saw, the way it affected so many people around me made me feel so good because it was wonderful to see other people who can actually feel the same way I feel about certain topics. And I think that's very important because in this time and age were becoming very inhumane. Yeah. So to actually relate to something and believe it's not okay and try to defend it is um, something very great. And then can you talk about the last uh, documentary and the for fourth one? And uh... The last documentary is called 17. I just mm -hmm. recently finished it. It's about the under-17 female football players who played at the FIFA World Cup last year in Jordan. Okay, yes. So that was the first time uh, Jordan hosts the World Cup, which is a great achievement for Jordan. And um, I worked on this documentary with Prince Ali as well because, you know, he was, uh, he's very passionate about football. Mm -hmm. He was uh, in okay. FIFA and all of that. So um, I, uh, I did this documentary. It's my first happy documentary. I thought I didn't want to do it at first, but then when I got to know the girls and when I got to, when I started filming and when I was traveling with them and being with them every day, uh, I just fell in love with them of and course, I fell in love exactly. with it. And I don't know if this is my favorite documentary because it's so different from the others, but I do for sure know that I really love this documentary and I have very high hopes for it. So hopefully something great happens. And when are you going to present this new documentary? So. I still don't know. Okay. <laughs> we're we were discussing that today, actually. I don't know. <laughs> That's great. Let just yet. let us know and you know, we're like going to You'll follow be there. you. Of course. Of course Thank yes. you very much. <laughs> and um, okay, just last question and then we're going for uh, circadian music. And I wanted to, to ask you about the Cannes Film Festival. I know that uh, you were also representative in the 64th. Mm -hmm. And uh, what was this experience? Uh, can you tell us about something more? Um, I mean, it's a huge achievement. Also, like for me, that I'm coming from Italy, it's like talking about Cannes Film Festival. It's wow. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. It's it's a wonderful festival. It's overwhelming. I was there again this year, this mm -hmm. year, and it was quite different. When I went in, um, I think it was 2011. Uh, I went as a Jordanian representative through the Royal Film Commission, the RFC. Okay. So they had selected a few filmmakers from Jordan and they sent us to the Cannes Film Festival. It was very eye-opening. To be honest, I was extremely frightened because that was my first festival ever. I didn't have my film with me or anything, okay. so I just went there to network and to talk about making documentaries in Jordan because I had already made my first film, but it wasn't a part of the festival. So it was... Uh, it was, it was insane. It was really, really nice. I enjoyed it, but it was very overwhelming. When I went again this year, it was much different because I had already made a film and I was there to market it and promote it and do all of that. So I understood the festival more. Okay. It's definitely a festival I would love to go to every year. And I would advise anybody who can go, and everybody can go if you uh, yeah. apply online. Um, it's a very interesting uh, film festival. It's uh, very high profile. It's... Uh, Great. I loved it. I loved it. Good luck for this. And Thank you. Uh, we're going like for circadian music with Amer.
please don't go away. We are back in a few minutes after the break. اللحظة هاي ما بقدر أسحب لي خلص أنا وصلت لنقطة لا عودة جيد أصلاً دام تلعب وأحسن من نص الشباب اللي بيلعبوا الوينج gets a chance بجاني زيرو chances كباتن اللي عنا بالأردن أحبطوني بصراحة ضيعت وبكيت ومنتخب كأس العالم كيف بعدك تراعيني قررت أنه تفصلها من المدرسة رح تفصلها كانت يارب أنه ما تيجي اللحظة أنه وقت نكون من المنتخب we're here now, last full session. again with uh, with that and uh, of course we've just seen a small um, piece of uh, 17 I just have like because in if you meant to kill me actually <laughs> you saw the making of, of the film if you meant to kill me not the trailer ah, okay okay and uh, I just have like few questions for you the first one is uh, what are your future plans I mean you reach this point and what's next um. I, I want to continue making documentaries, obviously. Okay. I still don't have uh, topics for future documentaries. So if anybody has any ideas that you know I might like, I would love to hear, hear more about that. Um, I don't know. I usually take it one step at a time. So I want to continue with documentaries. Hopefully, once I get this out, the 17, um, I can focus on making another one and okay. see where life takes me. <laughs> okay. And uh, just another question about like, I know that you have like some children or people that are following you and living here in Jordan. And what's your like suggestions? What's your tips? What's your like uh, for them that they want to follow your path in somehow? Um, I think everybody should, nobody should be scared of anything. Nothing should scare you. You should be able to do whatever you want, follow your heart. Um, if you feel what you're doing is right, go ahead and do it. My mom always says, if you listen to any of us, you wouldn't be here today. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad I didn't in certain things, that is. Um, just follow your heart. If you want something, if you believe in something, do it. And don't let anybody stop you, basically. Nothing should scare you. Nothing should stop you. Life has so much to offer, and I think we should grab every opportunity we have. Yeah, that's true. And did you face like some like specific challenge like for I mean during your life or during it was like I know like that sometimes like not reaching your goal it means that you're like not been sad but like in somehow affects you and say what am I going to do do have I to follow the previous like path and uh, just continue with that or like completely change my life and say okay it's like a new reborn and I will start again no not really what I do is I I learn every single day from the smallest to the biggest mistakes um, it's okay to fail in certain things I have a lot of people have but one day you will succeed at something and if this doesn't work keep trying and if, if this is your passion if this is what you want to do keep following that and one day it will happen for you so Yes, of course, I have failed so much. I have uh, had so many people not believing in me. And uh, it never stopped me. It never really, it does affect you, of course, naturally. But um, I continue to do what I want. And with every mistake, I, I, I learn something new. And I continue to head with it. So it's, it's OK to make mistakes. It's OK to fail. It's, uh, yes, definitely. And really, I really want to thank you because it was like a great, great interview with you. Thank you so much. And uh, it was a pleasure. Please continue updating us with your like following uh, documentaries or you. your stats. Thank you. And um, OK, don't forget to follow us uh, on uh, Facebook and also on Instagram and uh, on Twitter. And. Uh, Let's say goodbye.